Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. And we get the back view of him. And I mean, it's just a mega. 52 yards is a long shot. Uh, Magnum P.I. is what yeah. we named him. No idea. Just but, a magnum. Yeah, just a magnum. Come on, Cam, last year. We said probably 150, mid 150. Yeah. Same doe from the morning come out with that nine pointer. Here, here steps out this 90 inch eight pointer. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ah. I'm like, okay, well, there's still a buck back there grunting. Yeah. And then out steps like another 90 inch eight yeah. pointer. I'm like, all oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> You're like, I'm like, deer, right there. Yeah. Like, and he's 30 already yards. 30 yards. Yeah. He, he was literally five yards from the base of the tree. Could have been. I had a buck down at 1.40 in the afternoon back there deep on public. Three does come out pretty early. It was like 2.45, 24 yard shot, sent the combat veteran. And I tell you what, man, dude, it just smoked. We always get so jacked up when the other person kills. It's just almost like we got it done. Yeah. And when you kill that doe, I was like, hell yeah, man. And we come down here to Missouri. My ass called me one more time. I'm like, is it a good buck? And he goes, yeah, real good, solid buck. I'm like, all right, boom. <laughs> and the deer just drops for sure. Super special to me. Whitetail Legacy Podcast, bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast, coming in your ear holes. And we got a juicy one this week. A just juicy old, hole? <laughs> yeah, just being all home slice, talking about some shit that we need to do and you guys need to do. Um, we're gonna we're go of, over. I was say we're kind of at that stage of the year where you're either hardcore turkey hunting or you got the guy out there who's like, we're about as far away from deer hunting as we are as close to it. So yeah, I need to do something. Yeah, get ready. So we're gonna cover a bunch of stuff that we think that you should take care of right now so when it is time to start thinking about deer hunting you're already set up ready to go because it seems like when it gets close to time to go there's just no time left and you're out there just running around Scrambling. trying to get anything done so start thinking about that stuff now and we're going to go through a bunch of bunch of stuff we got wrote down but uh, we're going to get into the people that make this possible we're going to start out with exodus trail cams um that's gonna be one of the tips in here everybody knows we love running trail cams we're huge on that but uh for this episode i want to hit their podcast um they have trail cam radio it's an excellent podcast they have on a ton of different guys um they have a lot of hill country guys on that's something that we don't cover hardly at all um they have a lot of you know buck bedding to knowing what food source to be on at the right time of year. Um, a lot of killers are traveling around doing these whitetail cribs and recording episodes. So they're getting a lot of killers from different States. Um, so go ahead and check out that trail cam radio. It's super solid. Um, it's awesome content. I listen to it all throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they also bring just some, I like when they do like the industry updates and stuff like that. It's just, cool to hear that kind of stuff interesting to me so they got a, a lot of different topics on there and they've had some really awesome guests so go ahead and check them out uh you got last breath yeah last breath tv uh i want to update the turkey count since we are in currently turkey season um garrett killed in first season on friday he did this is unbelievable he did a self-filmed reap and killed a turkey so um I, I was just thinking while I was eating supper and I was like, how in the hell did he do that? Like you grab the tripod with the camera and the reaper with one hand and your gun in the other hand, you know? I guess, yeah. So um, he killed, he got it done on the last day of first season for him. Second season opened with Matt killing his first public land bird. Um, first time ever hunting public land, went out there, scouted, put in some work to uh, find some birds and it paid off for him and uh, quick hunt quick hunt for him and then Allie she killed on Sunday with Logan and Garrett uh reaper style and that was about a 15 yard shot and um it was a long weekend for them they didn't have much action but uh, ended up sealing the deal there late so that's where we stand now the last breath crew has three birds down as of 
uh, Monday here on the 19th. So still second season until Wednesday or till Thursday, my fault. And then uh, roll into third season. So we'll maybe try to update you guys again here throughout the season, let you know who's getting what down. Um, also for last breath, want to cover uh, the launch party, July 23rd at the Adler Theater. Here, if you can make it, you better get your ass there. I don't know the number for this year, but the thing that we want to cover this week is the amount of things that they that these guys give away to the crowd. Um, last year, the number, well, two years ago, the number was up over $10,000 um, in gear given away. So uh, pretty substantial gifts given out. So like, likely that if you show up, you're going to get to take something home for free. So um, mark down on your calendar, guys. I can't stress that enough. July 23rd in Davenport at the Adler Theater. Yeah, I remember the first time I, we went there, they didn't, we didn't, they didn't know us. You know, we we're just dudes out in the crowd. And I think I got two T-shirts, a hat, a thing of quick fletchings, and a set of broadheads. Yeah. And I was like, I drank like six beers, free film, got like $60 <laughs> worth of stuff for free. I was like, dude, this is sick. <laughs> <laughs> Do this every weekend, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, Keep it coming. Yeah, they gave away a full Badlands set of camo. They give away slint Samer bags, full tree stand setups, trail cams, all kinds of stuff. It's crazy. Knives. Yeah, knives. Some not just like throwing out t-shirts or stuff. They're, throw, they're giving away some, you know, big. Useful stuff, yeah. Some big, giant, you know, costly gear. So um, they gave away a couple ground blinds, all kinds of stuff. So super cool. Super getting that's getting closer and closer. Be here before we know it. One thing I'm kind of looking forward to with this is maybe trying to knock out some of this before it gets hot. That's why I wanted to release this episode. It always seems like me and you are out there trying to get this deer stuff done when it's like 105 degrees out and yeah. middle of July and August, <laughs> and it's just hot as balls. We're out there, and we were just and, talking today. I'm like, we haven't done any of this shit. And May's already damn near booked up. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. all right, it's going to be out as balls again. Yeah, it's just absolutely terrible. So I'm going to try to maybe get this weekend. I don't have a lot going on. So I'm going to try to, I got to clean the birdhouses again and then hopefully knock out some of it. I got my trail cams organized and stuff. That's pretty good. So got some of it done, but definitely not over. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through like maybe eight, 10, things that we're going to be doing now to prepare us for the deer season coming up um this isn't going to be like a tactic or what we got going on for, for the beginning of the season our plan for this year we're still kind of making that seeing if we could pick up any more ground before season comes but this is just stuff that we know that has to be done and i know that 90 percent of the people out there that are going to be watching this are going to have this same list that they need done but it's stuff that they might not realize so um go ahead and hit them with the first uh tactic you got over there homie or i guess first thing that you're gonna need yeah. to get done uh so just in the time frame of the year uh obviously what i was thinking of is talking about food plots um getting in those plots you probably need to get out there and spray here relatively quickly and uh obviously if you're doing you know a summer plot here um, work on deciding what you're going to plant. If you're going to change it up from last year, or if you're going into a new area, get it mowed and sprayed. Um, obviously would have liked to mowed here sooner rather than later, but, uh, go ahead and, you know, start thinking about what you're going to plant, how much of it you're going to need. Um, that stuff costs money. It does take time to get out there and get sprayed, especially if you don't have the equipment like Cody and I do. You're going to need to set somebody up to come out there, be sure everybody can be out there at the same time. Um, it, it can be a real kind of shit show if, uh, if you don't have the stuff to do it. So that's my first, if you're into the food plots, um, get out there and get it sprayed and um, de determine like, you know, the size and. Yeah, if, uh, if you are going to do even a fall plot, need to make sure and get out there and decide if you're going to do uh anything get a soil test if soil sample now that's a good thing to send in see if you need any lime out there or anything like that 
take care of that now before you're like, oh, I'm going to plant this. And then you go out there and your pH is all messed up. And now you're behind the game. You plant it. If you get that stuff out there now, let it get in the soil. It's going to be way better. You're actually going to get a pretty good stand. Um, we're going to do a secondary plot on the property this year. Um, we need to get on that here soon. The good thing about what we're planting is you can plant it later in the year or early in the year. So we just need to get it sprayed and killed off. And I'm probably going to be buying a side-by-side -side probably next year. And that'll help us out tremendously to be able to put a sprayer on that and yeah. at least get that part done to where we can just get that done ourselves and then have a guy make sure it's good and dead and then have a guy come do the rest so it's just for a guy for us to buy a tractor and a tiller and all that man it's just too much money it's just insane <laughs> what it costs to put food plots in you got to know a guy and we know a guy but he's logan he's been coming down and doing it he lives so far away i think we found a closer guy this year go ahead and knock it out for us and hopefully we can get a little better stay in the beans and go from there. So um, second thing I want to talk to you about guys is something that kind of goes along with the food plot. We talked to our landowner and asked him if we could plant that second plot this year. He said, go ahead. So this is a good time. If you've got a lease or if you've got permission, go talk to that person and, or send them a message and say, Hey, just checking in on you guys, seeing how it's, how it's, you know, how it's going. Is there anything that needs done out there? Um, having deer ground is something that I think when like, just kind of in your situation, homie, we were just had the last couple of days when people have it, they forget how awesome it is. They don't realize what they got. They don't understand that. Oh, I got this 240. I can just run around and rip on and do whatever I want. You know, they don't realize that it could be gone in a minute. So Mm -hmm. it's always good to double check those landowners just talk to them um don't even have to be about hunting you can just send them a message and say hey how's it going I was wondering how you know your spring's going if you're out there turkey hunting maybe knock on the door and uh we that's a good time to talk about you know if you don't have permission to do whatever you want to talk about hey i'm thinking about putting a second plot in or hey i want to trim up a bunch of stuff to be able to put a you know a box blind over here or something stuff that you need to get done now instead of a month before season you're trying to get a hold of the guy and he's like a lot of us around here they're out in the fields you know <laughs> they're picking and shit's getting ready to rip about time season comes they ain't got time to be like yeah you know to talk and go walk something if you need to mark something out and say hey i want to plant this over here kind of like we did he wanted to know where i wanted to plant you know, if I had to go out there while he was in, you know, picking, it would have been a disaster. So talk to your landowners and also talk to your hunting buddies. If you got a guy that you hunt with, um, kind of talk to them, talk to if you're hunting in a group and see if anybody has any plans of doing something radical, it's going to mess up what you guys got going on. Maybe a guy's thinking about moving in an area and you're thinking about moving in on the same area and then when hunting season comes around, you guys have stands 200 yards away and you didn't even know you both were in there. So talk to them and kind of make a plan with them or what you got going on or see if they want to go in and pitch in like us, be 50-50 our plots and kind of make a game plan. It's always better to work together with someone anyways to get, get a better idea of what you got going. So what's another thing you got over there? Um, is, uh, kind of something that we talk about more like during the last season is, um, new stand placement or, you know, shifting a stand. Um, if you don't like the way it's leaning on the tree, you can go up or up or down, throw it, throw in another stick or another screw in step if you need to, to get up, um, or just, you know, totally move the stand. If you want to get into, you seen the deer, you know, slightly altering their patterns um you know mo just move to a whole new tree and we th this kind of come up in my brain when I was writing these notes down because we have a stand that we've had in this tree for two years now and it's in the, it's it's money spot it's just not the right tree anymore we need to move literally eight yards ten yards to this other tree on the corner and you wouldn't think that eight yards is that much but it's going to give us better access 
It's going to give us better shooting and we're going to have a little more back cover um, just by moving that that far. So and it um, give us a little bit more time before the deer is right on top of us. Yeah, we can actually see. Yeah. yeah, we can actually see where they're coming from instead of them, you know, just coming right up from the back the side. Boom, so, you know, they're right there. Yeah. So um, that's something that you can get done right now. And it's not really too green out there. We just learned that trick hunting, unfortunately. Um, it's not too green out there. You can still kind of get a decent feel for how it's going to be. But uh, so you can get some shooting lanes trimmed. Obviously, you're going to get your, your main shooting lanes done. And one thing I, I put down here, then check again late summer. I think that's something that we kind of dropped the ball on. But by our second hunt, you know, we've got all it takes is one deer to come in and be like, oh, well, I wouldn't have been able to shoot him. I'm going to ax this, ax that, yeah. boom. And then you're good, you know. So um, maybe not a, maybe late summer, just double check. But definitely after a couple hunts, you're going to have it dialed in there. Yeah, that's something. If we do move that stand, we're going to have to trim a bunch to get something to shoot towards the east there in case something crazy happens mm -hmm. you know and there's something we've seen bucks cruise the back side of that yeah and there's that's a pretty thick tree so you're gonna have to do some substantial it is very thick some substantial trimming to get up in there but that's something we need to do we need to get maybe one stick higher and get up in that tree have plenty of back cover and be able to shoot all the same stuff get that plot in there make that kind of little honey hole um spot we ran the trail cameras there and then we moved the trail camera 10 yards got a bunch more data and that makes you think well and then you just got that edging wind there that eight ten yards further back if you got that northwest it's just barely edging you a little bit better than if something did come up in there because we hunted that a lot of times on kind of a sketch wind where we're like man they're going to be on the line yeah you just hope that you're up high enough which it's questionable if we are that it just goes right over because they're so damn close to you and now it, i mean that's kind of out of the question we'll be we'll be way better just like you said yeah yeah so that's definitely something to do and then we got the one down in the creek that we hunted and you know you hang a stand you think you're solid but then like you said a deer comes in from a different way that you might not think and you couldn't get the shot opportunity or you see a deer go past and you're like, okay, I got to get something going on here. So we need to get to that tree. That's a tree that I think we need to hunt more in October on a South and, yeah. and just, just get in there and, and try to hunt it. I don't think we've ever hunted that thing in October. No. So need to try it this year. I feel like they work that Creek a lot more than we do. And we need to get some shooting there on that backside and I think we need Shoot. one on the south side of the tree and one on the north side of the tree. Yeah. As far as the shooting lane goes. Yeah. So do I be able to shoot the creek and then shoot shoot further out into the road there just in case something's edging us. So yeah. But hopefully we could get we could shoot all the way across to the other side of the creek there, you know, a 45 yard or so. But I feel yeah. like if especially in October, I feel like if something's working there, they're not gonna be you know, on the gas, wide open, running around. Yeah. It's going to probably stand down there at that creek, check some shit out. There's a food plot going to be right there. Oh, I'm going to see what's in the food plot. Okay, I don't see anything up there. I'm just going to work north then. And yeah. you might have to shoot him right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. For sure. I think that we, we never, we talked about trying decoy, and that's a perfect spot for a decoy. Put a decoy out in that plot. The perfect spot. Get one yeah. fired up on a scrape there or something. One thing about that property is we're going to have, we should have a ton of shooters that we had a ton of border lines last year and, you know, a few shooters. So there should be a bunch of solid bucks there this year. It, is, so, it, it has been like the, the traditional uh, transition. Like first year there, we were there, had like two shooters, a bunch of small bucks. Last year, borderline maybe a handful of shooters and then you know hopefully this year it's like you said we yeah, got a couple of three three, three with four three years of history yeah. yeah so excited about that but yeah go get out there check those stands if you got if you got the stands that you already hung get up in there look around make sure your straps are good um, but then if you're hanging a new stand especially really think about where a deer might come trim some stuff but don't get too carried away you know 
make sure there's a little bit of cover. And then like homie said, first, second hunt, you're going to realize what you actually need, but at least get a good start. You can always trim some little stuff out there, but if you got to whack a tree, we we've done that where you got to whack a pretty good sized tree with a handsaw. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> you want to burn your shoulders out. <laughs> yeah. Handsaws will burn you out. We, we put some heck of work in with those, but that's something we're going to try. We're going to try to do less hanging hunts this year and more. We're actually going to try to have some stands hung on the public just to make it a little easier on ourselves. And we're still going to do a lot of hanging hunts, but we're going to actually try to have some stuff hung. I'm going to hang some stuff out at the urban piece. I already got some spots found, found some, we went out there mushroom hunting. I found some pretty good scrapes on just giant doe trails. I'm like, well, I'll just throw one here. Yeah. It's real easy to get to about 32 seconds from the track <laughs> compared to what better. we're used to. Yeah, you know that's I mean? better than 32 minutes. Yeah, it's probably like three minutes, but you know, for for what we're used to, that's oh, gonna be yeah. just a ripper right down the hill, boom. What do you have my jacket? Yeah, done a bunch of bunch of big oak trees down there. Uh hopefully a bunch of acorns on them. Pretty good open oak flat next to some thick stuff and it bellows back off in the lake. It's thick down there in the lake, so it seems like perfect bedding, good for south wind. Looks like a good early season setup. Hopefully run a mobile on that scrape and be textbook deal, but <laughs> going to be back on the urban piece. So that'd be fun. Um, but yeah, going to be out there. I'm going to have to hang stands so I can hang three out there. Really? Yeah. Three per hunter. So I was like, dang, that's pretty sweet. I got all these stands in here doing nothing. You know, yeah. I'm like three in a mobile. That's, that's yeah. cash, you know. I might do two in a mobile, but that's pretty solid. Get in there where I got all the hunted all those does a couple of years ago, hang one there, hang one at that spot, and then have my mobile to to bounce around on. But yeah, you get three stickers, so nice. that's pretty sweet. But all right, what else you got over there? Uh this is something that I really love doing. Uh it's looking at the last year of trail cameras. I used to be a guy to save the pictures that I wanted to save, wouldn't save all of them. And since I've been, you know, hunting with you more, that's something that you do is you save damn near all the pictures, you know, uh, obviously get rid of the blanks. But as far as like, if there's a deer there, you pretty much save the picture. And that's something that I've really worked on and trying to do. And um, it's to just go through them pictures again sometimes as season's coming up you're getting amped up and jacked up especially if you get a shooter being dumb coming in daylight on a pattern you know you start overlooking the small stuff so now is the time when you can really go back through the pictures and you know look at the wind and such um see if he's coming from a different slightly different way than you thought he might have been um you know or just really think about what that deer is doing at that time. You know, why is he there? What Dan Bias always likes to say is, is figure out the why. And now is the time when you can really slow down, You're not just trying to bust through 2,000 pictures. Um, you can just slow down and look at all the details, look up the weather and the wind if, if you need to. And uh, something might click. It's, it's worth a shot. And if not, you at least get a look at all the deer that you hopefully get a hunt coming up so um and by doing that then you can clear your cards after that or you know that this card is you know clear get it set up with the camera get it formatted and um, go from there but just just take the time looking at trail cam picks is fun or videos and um as i was looking through the through some couple cards for cody last week I come across that uh, 10 pointer with that flyer off the G2 on public that just showed up out of nowhere. And when it first popped up on the screen, I was like, damn. And I was like, what deer is that? And then he finally lifted his head up and turned and I seen that kicker. I was like, shit, like kind of got me jacked up there for a minute. I was like, all right, all right, I see you. So um, yeah, it's just cool to, for me to go back and look at, look at stuff like that. And um, it'd be crazy if a small detail now just by doing that would put you in a position to be successful this fall would be pretty cool yeah the more we talk to people during the seat the late season and the and the off season here um 
I've been going through, through my stuff on my computer and just looking at it. And literally, I don't know why, but it seems like you get so many things in your head. You're thinking about the win. You're thinking about this. I'm just going back to like the legit basics when I went through it and like, okay, why is he there? That's my first, like, what, what is he doing? And then I'm like, okay, where did he come from? Mm -hmm. And just doing those two things, like not overcomplicating it with a bunch of crazy, not where is he going? You know, not what, what did he do after this? You know, what direction is he coming from? And why is he there? You know, what would make sense for him to be there? And just doing that helped me out tremendously. Just literally when we talked to, you know, Bill from Spartan Forge, like killing these things sometimes I think is basic as hell and we overcomplicate it. Like you just, the more data you can get, the better, but you have to have a basis of data before you can start putting just like when he's trying to kill me, you know, you got to know what I'm doing and then, okay, he's driving to work. What time is he driving to work? Okay. What direction is he going? So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to think with the basics. Is he coming out of his bed? Is he working for does? Is he going to food? That's what I've been doing. Going there. Like, okay, this deer is here at midnight. What is he doing? Is he coming off of food? Is he already going back to bed? Is he hitting a scrape? where's this cam at and some stuff is clicking for me um like that spot i found during shed season i feel like all those deer that's on that camera are working if we're not getting them up on where we're getting those they're they're crossing down there and that's why they're like sporadic there they're only hitting that and it'd be interesting to see if they're only hitting that on like a certain wind because it seemed like a lot a lot of them were south remember because we were like man it's hard to hunt this because they're all on a south yeah and it'd be interesting to see if we ran a cam down there if they're using that on a north or something expected because if they're using that on a north it'd be textbook so that's something i'm excited about to run a camera they're there they're running east and west on that right yeah Okay. Yeah, yeah, They're running east and west, just like they are there, you know, kind of pinching that lake. So I feel like that, seeing that spot during shed season and then looking at all those trail cameras and realizing how sporadic they were, I'm like, man, there's nothing that's like even every other day or they're working one way, they're working another way. You're like, man, it just seems like it's so sporadic. But I realized that. And then in my mind, I'm like, what are they doing? And then I'm like, okay, they're going from bed to food most of the time. Mm -hmm. And they're either bedding close or they're bedding back there where we think they are. And I'm like, I bet you if we had a cam on that South, that it'd be the complete opposite wind that they're using that. So definitely be interesting to, to find. And that's something that I found during shed season and it kind of clicked, but then I went back through my trail camera cards and I'm like, okay, that's the only other way they can get there. Like they gotta be using that. If they're so sporadic up here, they gotta be pretty solid down there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping. And you know, you find a spot, you're like, ah, oh, that might be good. But then you think about the terrain, you're like, man, it's probably better than I think. And it's just pinching them down so well. So we're going to get in there, run a cam, hopefully run a mobile there and that and it just this stuff just starts clicking down there because like i said it if a buck goes through there it's in shooting range so it doesn't have an, a choice so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm excited to blast down in there be a good spot to hunt and try to kill those bucks that are just avoiding us they're there you know and even they're there even in early october but we just can't get on them because the dang the no hunting area just killer you know what I mean? yeah it, it is absolutely we could just dagger. keep crushing in there and find them <laughs> but if they're not there in daylight on the killing side then it, you can't get in there so it is what it is <laughs> yeah but going along with the trail cams this is something that we brought up multiple times on here we all we do run an ass load of cams so you have to have some kind of system when you do that but all my cards are back in their files they're remarked. I, for some reason, I had some in my truck, some in my car, some in my gun cabinet. 
I got them all back in the, you know, in the folder, number one, number two, number three, number four. And I've lost a couple, have no idea where they are. So this is the time of the year you need to buy more, you know, buy the ones that you're missing. I went through all my cameras. They're not in there. Um, I don't know. You know how sometimes we throw one in this camera when we get in the middle of the season. I'm like, homie might have a couple, but yeah, yeah no I'll have telling. to look at my thing. I'd... I'll check it's, it out for you. Yeah, it's no <laughs> telling, but it, you, always nice to have a couple more. We're adding cameras to the arsenal, so we're going to have to buy some more buy cards more. anywhere. But start buying your cards now and start buying your batteries now. Um, you're out walmart or whatever and you know you're going to be running lithiums and you know you're going to need five packs throw a pack in your cart right now just to kind of break up the cost over a while you know you go to walmart and you, your wife sees that you spent two hundred dollars on batteries one rip she's gonna be like <laughs> what the heck you know what i mean but if you hit it 15 20 15 you know 30 <laughs> You kind of blend it in there over three or four months. It don't look near as bad. So um, the amount of money we spend in batteries is absolutely ridiculous. So kind of, I mean, we bought the mega packs off Amazon. We both spent like two sixty a rip. It wasn't. It, it was a <laughs> yeah. Lot. It was. You know I mean? It was. It was up there. Now that you say that, I blend a lot of shit in my life. A yeah, little you bit just kind of time. blend it in over time, and they never notice. A little secret tip for you. Just right. Just, be like, ah, you know, the big purchases are hard to do that. But if you know you're going to need 10 SD cards and you slip two SD cards in, you know, every month for one shopping trip out of the month, they're no idea. Never. It's a little $10 charge on there. They have no idea what's going on. I do that all the time. Slip it in yep. there. Good to go. And then the big things, you say, hey, I got this coming up. They don't know you already spent $300 on batteries <laughs> this year. <laughs> <laughs> they're just thinking oh yeah cool oh man yeah he hasn't bought anything hunting in a while <laughs> yeah this is the last thing i need babe this is it and i'm good <laughs> it's may first yeah may first <laughs> uh, but yeah get those trail cams get up the cards get start and start snagging up batteries um if you are going to run on video mode you're going to try it out just save yourself the hassle and get the lithiums and uh they're costly, man. We even bought the big pack. When we bought the big pack, we had some problems with the dead batteries, though. So yeah, yeah, you did, and some of your yeah. cams, didn't you? Yeah. yeah, I had I had a lot of batteries that were bad, so that's why we got that battery tester. And I was like, "What the heck, man? You buy the big pack of lithiums, you think you're gonna be solid, and you know, seven or between five and seven of the hundred aren't no good. So, mm -hmm. but I even got some bad ones in the in the like the fifth the 14 or 15 pack or whatever so huh definitely challenging and there's nothing worse than going to a cam they think it's going to be fire and it took six pictures because the batteries died that's I the worst hate that. yeah absolute devastation you're all jacked up the anticipation's so high on a card pool like the first couple you're like oh Especially yeah, if you we'll like let it sit a week yeah. or two longer, just be like, yeah. I know it's gonna be fire. You know, know it's gonna be solid. <laughs> There's gonna be something right there. So get that shit lined out. We told you guys a hundred times on this, but that that's something that we when we started doing, it was just so much easier on us. But we'll be at like 40 cans this year. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So when you got that many cans, it's just tough to but they definitely definitely help us out and let us know what's out there and we just love running them we love getting pictures you know what i mean it's just it's fun so what else you got well just kind of piggybacking off of that this is something that i always always got burned by until about four or five years ago when i started my hunting fund so what i have down is budget new equipment and gear um Buy slowly over time, just like we're talking about here with batteries and SD cards. Buy slowly over time, but pick up your more impactful stuff earlier. That way you can get in a groove with it, like your bow. If you're going to be switching to a mobile setup, if you're going to switch to a new release, a sight, you know, the big stuff that's really going to be that could make or break your hunt. Um, like if you're going to get some new camo, you can probably buy the new camo in August. 
but I set aside a hundred dollars a week basically. And, um, I just save it up, just save it up. And then I know I kind of go through a list after season of like stuff I'm going to change set while it's fresh in my mind, make a list of what I want to change or what I want new. And then I'm like, okay, this is $800. Uh, this is $400. I can buy this year, this year, I'll have enough here, you know, do all the math. And then, um, here the last couple of years, I've been trying to do the big stuff early. Like I've already bought a new release this year. I'm going to be getting a new bow here uh, in May. So like the big stuff, get it done, get it out of the way. It's usually the most expensive too. That way you at least know that you got whatever you really probably wanted. We always really want the really expensive shit. So um, that's something that, that's really helped me. And it's kind of just getting me doing deer stuff year round too, kind of fill that gap. And a lot of guys out there, are gear gear nuts you know that's we're turned into gear nuts and we're always putting paracord on tree stands or you know whatever soundproof in this and uh losing a couple ounces here and there and um you know just something to be fidgeting with so a hundred dollars a week has really made a huge difference in uh me being prepared for season when it comes around you're not scrambling the last month like oh man I need eight hundred dollars a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need yeah, arrows. I need arrows. Or something. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a good tip. Even if you can't do a hundred, you know, do 25, 20, whatever you can do to set back. Um, one thing I do that's kind of like that is I got a list on my phone, and it's like all the gear that I need to buy, like the actual. Mm -hmm. I got a need list and I got a want list, and I just same along thing that it says things to get done before you know, deer season, literally things to do before deer season. I got like, like I wanted to get my garage done. The wagon blinds on there. Both the plots are on there. It's like the big things that you need to knock out before you want to get serious and ha literally have nothing on your mind. And I do the same thing with like, I got arrows on my list. I got, uh, boots on my list i got socks on my list. like and it feels really good for me i don't know why if it's just my personality but if i can delete something off that list like things to do or things to buy when i delete something i'm like oh yeah i just feel like i'm accomplishing something getting closer to what i wanted to get done that year so i just uh just deleted something today off of it and i was like man that feels good to to wipe that off so um, when I was making the notes for the show, I got on there. I'm like, oh shit, I got a bunch of this stuff done already. Or, you know, <laughs> the addition was a big one, getting people to praise the addition. So I was on there and I got that knocked out. So I deleted that. I'm like, okay, nice. wife is solid on that. Good to go. Garage was a big one. Deleted that off there. You know, now the wagon blinds, the top one, giant letters, like, God, I gotta, gotta get this, get this done. So that's the next one. I need to rip on before it's July and hot as hell. Mm -hmm. But another thing with, with my budget situation is my money goes automatically out of my paycheck and into a savings account, no debit card, no checks, no nothing. The only way I get the money is I have to physically bank and pull it out. That way I don't spend it on nothing other than when I'm ready to buy something. Yeah. That way it's in there plan. and it's not going anywhere. I do the same thing. You got that little fun. You just put in there and you're like, all right, I'm going to buy arrows. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to get this money out. It's going to be there. I ain't going to worry about it. I'm not going to have some extra power bill pop up or something that's going to prevent me from when I'm ready to rip on the arrow that I choose, I'm ready to rip and go buy it. So, yeah. And I also think that this helps you buy what you want to buy, regardless of the price, because it might just be me too. If I want, you know, this $180 dozen arrows, but if I was scrambling around, I'd be like, well, shit, I'll just get the $100 one here because I just need it and, I'll, and I'm going. But if I have it saved up and I'm ready to go, I'm, I'm already, you know, dedicated to the 180 ones that I really want, that I really think are going to be a quality product. And that, I mean, just goes for anything, but that's, might just be me and how I do it. But I feel better about spending it when I have it saved up. Yeah, I feel the same. It's not like it's it's something you've been working for. So it's almost like a reward. You're like, hey, I save this money. I'm going to actually get what I want. 
instead of just doing what's good enough because this is what I got right now. So mm -hmm. another thing that we're both doing, um, and this is the time of year to think about it, is we're both getting different guns for gun season. Um, so a lot of people aren't even remotely thinking about gun season right now. They have no idea what's going on. They're not thinking about shooting their gun. They're not thinking about buying a new gun, whatever, a new scope. They might have been thinking during after second shotgun season last year, or rifle season somewhere. They're like, man, I'm tired of this. I'm going to get a new scope, you know, or blah, blah, blah. And then Christmas happened and New Year's happened and, you know, Easter and now it's turkeys. They got their, with their shotgun. They're not thinking about anything, but. We're both getting new guns, so it's fresh in our mind. But this is a time that you need to start thinking about shooting that gun, and you also need to think about finding some ammo for that gun right now. <laughs> because last season, I was looking for deer slugs, and there was absolutely nothing. You could buy zero deer slugs anywhere around us. Went to Bass Pro, like, guaranteed. I'm like, oh, they're guaranteed to have some slugs. Not one slug anywhere at Bass Pro. I'm like, how in the hell can you go from the Bass Pro that's got eight rolls of shotgun ammo? You know, yeah. <laughs> it has no slugs. But uh Bro, I remember your ammo situation yeah. when we were in the wagon blade again. <laughs> I was like, yeah. right, <laughs> I had three shots. <laughs> I had three I like, shots. Okay. Like, this is it, man. This is because I shoot one type of slug. That's the best slug that shoots through that gun. I shot like eight different types, you know, and I'm like, I need this one slug. So I got three shells. Cause I don't like to, I don't like to use shit. I don't know. Solid. I just want yeah. it to be what I know works good. So <laughs> I was down to three shells, you know, and right now I went, I got and bought, went another box, you know, so I got another five, but I need to buy another five and then I don't have to worry about it. I got it, you know? So something that you need to be thinking about right now, we both got different guns. So we got to do, Sight the whole thing in my guy imagine buying that gun in august you're like oh yeah i'm good fourth july comes and then you know october's here you're hunting and then you're like shit it's gun season <laughs> and it's three days before season you're out sighting that thing in you know so, probably be sleeting or something stupid yeah something dumb cold yeah you, you know, won't want like to be out there when i was shooting my muzzleloader last year <laughs> like two days i gotta make sure this thing's ready to rip you know <laughs> that's fine <laughs> but you need to shoot it and you know we're we're getting some guns that we can reach out there and touch them so we need to make sure that we're really proficient with those guns so you need to start doing that now same thing goes with your bow anytime you can shoot your bow is a good time to shoot your bow you know even Absolutely. if you got time to shoot one arrow or 15 arrows there's never a bad time to shoot your bow any time of the year. Just if you got a second, you're feeling it, go shoot it. Um, but yeah, a lot of people think about the, the bow, but they don't ever think about the gun, you know. And so, sometimes if you had practice with that gun and you could shoot 150 yards and there's one out there or you haven't practiced with it and you're like, all right, I'm not shooting past 100. And then you got to let something walk because you're not comfortable when you could have went three times when you had nothing going on on a Sunday morning and went and shot, but you decided not to. And now it's season. You're like, well, I'm limited to a hundred. That's all I'm shooting. So. I don't know if it was Lemansky or Jeremiah or somebody. Um, they do a one shot challenge is you just pick up your bow, cold shot, one arrow is all you get. I mean, cause that's what you got when you're hunting. And it is a great idea. And I've done that. I did that last year. I'll do, I'll do it. Um, like right when I get home from work, just grab the bow out of the case, one arrow, one night and boom. Now then obviously like I'll shoot, you know, come in and get clothes change or whatever. But that first arrow, I like that. Yeah. But it's gotta yeah. be money. You, yeah, it's gotta you be know. money. You, you, right you, have, the, you haven't got, you know, eight shots in already and you're feeling it. You're like, just, all right, all right, this one's going to be it. <laughs> yeah, this like, one's going to be I'm that first one. Now. I got it out in. So um, another thing kind of to do right, right now is just like you were talking about, we're gear junkies. Um, if you're thinking about changing anything, if you're thinking about going to a saddle, because heard everybody thinking about talking about saddle hunting, 
If you're thinking about getting a hanging hunt set, if you're thinking about hunting out of a ground blind more, you need to be practicing that stuff right now. You know, set that ground blind up, shoot out of it. See if it's something you're actually going to like before you go hunting. Like you set the ground blind up. You're like, yeah, this is going to be perfect. You hunt it three times and you're like me and you, you're like, this is absolute ass trash because we hate <laughs> ground blind hunting. Unless it's elevated, it's absolutely terrible. You can't see, can't hear. It's terrible. But you might have never hunted out of ground blind. You're like, well, I'm going to give it a shot. And then you're out there. You set it up in your yard. You're like, man, maybe I don't like this as much as I thought. So you don't want to take the time to go out there, set it up. And you definitely don't want to never shoot out of it and it ruin the opportunity at a deer. Same thing with a saddle. I feel like a lot of people get a saddle. They break it right out. And they're going hunting and they have, they've never shot out of it very much. They've never hung in different random different trees with maybe a not a lean or something. I know if that's something that I would do, I would be real. I would have to really break that thing down and understand what I'm doing. Just like with our hanging hunt stance and we got our first hanging hunt stand. We hung them multiple times, just trying to get a feel for what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it. But you know, a lot of people get a new bow and they, oh, I got to shoot this a bunch to get used to it. And then, but they might get a, a new range finder and it's got six different settings on. It's got meters, yards, you know, angle, and they don't mess with it hardly at all. And then they get out there and they're like, well, shit, I, I don't know what's going on. So I've it, done that I, before. One wrong button. Yeah, one wrong button, you know, and you're shooting three yards off because you're using the angle compensator and you've been shooting all year without the angle compensator <laughs> so <laughs> stuff you need to tinker with your stuff now if you get something new and and figure it out and it's also good you know you get something you use your saddle for a while and you realize man maybe i need this rope or maybe i need maybe it's damaged or something i've got stuff in the mail and it's been in the box and right before season, I get it out and I'm missing parts or something. You're like, what the hell? I brought those, um, those knocks, the lighted knocks at a multiple yeah. piece. They were there for two months. They sat there. I'm ready to a week before a season. I'm like, all right, put the lighted knocks on. None of them fit. I'm like, I should have knew this two months ago, but they've been sitting up there, lost the receipt already, had no idea. You know, I'm like, why well, own these things? I can't even use them. So it's good to go use your shit that you got or your new stuff that you get. Um, this is the time of year. It's nice out, you know, get out there and try that stuff out and get a feel for what it, what it's like. Me and you working with a bunch of different new brands this year. Um, I want to, I want to try that shit out now before I get out there and it gets close to season. And I'm like, man, I want to, maybe I want to try a different broadhead or maybe I want to try a different, arrow maybe i want to try something different it just there's a ton of options out there and that makes it hard to yeah. narrow it down and then you narrow it down and there's always something better that comes up too you're like i got my thing and then you're like well maybe maybe this was this is maybe this was it so all right what you got over there um this just goes back to our our club of running trail cameras and um it's, it's also trying to if you pick up a new piece or if you're switching to public or if you just need some more intel is kind of get a plan for your camera placement and what to expect out of that camera so what i mean by that is if you're going to leave that camera in that spot all year just because you have no idea what's there you just want to see from you know what to say august 1st to january 31st you know what what came through here and when did it come through here so or is it going to be more of a summer camera and then when it when season comes in you're going to transition it to um you know scrapes and then you're going to be in some no bedding area um you know a camera that you're going to move around because you have a good idea of um the area and you're just trying to get it done so um this is something that cody and i have actually done we picked up our lease last year i think we had oh well i don't know how many cameras we had on there but i know two of them we were probably going to leave all year the one by the uh the street that was out in the middle of the open on the ditch 
I think we're going to probably leave that one all year. And the one on the dam, we're mm. probably going to leave all year. And then we had uh, probably a handful of other cameras that we're going to be switching around. And I think having those cameras set in that spot just gives you a constant. So, you know, cameras can pick up, activity picks up and, and goes down, but at least you have that constant. Be like, okay, this spot was good in the summer, and then it was just shit after October, which, you know, we've seen before. So if, if you go in with a plan, I think it helps you leave that camera there, even when activity is low, because you you have to do that at least for one full year, I believe, to get the full picture. And um, if, if you yeah, pull especially it, if it's a new piece. Yeah, if yeah, it's a exactly. new piece, you have no idea. You pull that camera, you you found a scrape, and it's on there all October, and you're like, man, this is junk. And then you pull it, and then it fires back up. And the first week of November, it was on fire. But you have no idea what was going on you just walk past it you know the second third week of november you're like damn that thing's wide open now you know something's been hitting it so i've done that before where you're like i'm leaving this on this spot you know and then you pull it and then you go back you're like damn i should have i should have left it so that's a good tip make a plan on what you're what you're doing with your cameras if you're leaving them if you're gonna if it's gonna be a mover like like the urban the urban cams i need to get some cams out there it's really hard to pull cams so i just need to get cams out there and i need to leave them and that will show me what i need to know you got to burn a camera for a whole year to get that data to understand what the hell you got going on so you think you're wasting your opportunity this year but you're you're gaining for years to come yeah. by leaving that thing one year so, compared to hunting the next 10 yeah it's Obviously. tough to do but it's it's important and it will definitely change the way you look at a property because you can you only can hunt it so many times you might hunt it four or five times but that camera's there every day at night you know it's there so e even if you get a picture of a buck at night you're like okay well there's a solid one in the area but i ain't seeing them when i'm in here hunting so maybe i do need to move it now so Definitely, definitely something that I need to do on the new piece. Because when I was running cams out there, they were, they I were, was all over the place, were, everywhere, right. everywhere, right. everywhere. Like I couldn't keep sets, up with you, bro. Week sets keep up over here, week over here, week over here. So, and then I, the challenge of pulling them there is so tough because you got to sign in, sign out. If you had one there, it's just there. Like, I'll get it in mushroom season. <laughs> it's cool, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Or just mushroom season, beyond. mushroom season, they, they said you could walk it whenever it's open. I was like, oh, sweet. So I'm going to do all my scouting and stuff then. Just, yeah. just go walk. So yeah, I guess shed season is just a rip too. The way it sounds, they said as long as it's not deer season, you can be out there whenever you want. I was like, sweet. So, so October 1, you would have to start signing in now. Yeah. You have to start signing in now if you're actually hunting. So, or, and they said, if you're like hanging stands and stuff like that before season, yeah. they want you to anything hunting related. Gotcha. So, but yeah, so that's something that I definitely need to do. I had something while you were talking and then you got me off topic, but you got, you got another one over there. Let me think. Yeah, I, got, I, I, okay. I got, I got two more. Um, right. First one here is not talking to everybody, but maybe shed like 20 pounds. Get in, get in a little bit better shape. Um, one thing bad about being in a little better shape is you got a little less fat on you and your ass is cold. <laughs> Something that uh, Cody and I have learned here over the past couple of years. But just um, you're going to be mentally tougher if, if you just were, if you went through the process of trying to lose 20 pounds. Uh, you're going to feel better. You're going to be able to climb a hill better, drag a deer out better pulling your bow back you're going to be a little bit sturdier it's going to be coming back a little bit easier um just 20 pounds is it's a lot it's going to take a little bit of work and uh but it's going to feel damn good when you're down 20 pounds and um one thing that i've noticed the most about losing weight is 
my limberness is back. Like I've never been as limber as I am now. Stepping over a log, jumping a creek. Well, I'm still terrible at jumping a creek, but um, you know, just out there walking around, you just feel good. You just feel light on your feet and um, that makes you really feel good out there. So along with that mental toughness, it gets you through a long day of hunting in the rut. If you, if you don't have anybody out there to bullshit with like Cody and I do, um, them days get long <clears throat> real quick. So um, that's the, I, I could talk an hour or so just about the mental side of doing that, but um, shed 20 pounds and you're gonna feel great. Yeah, I, I think that's awesome. You know, shed 20 pounds is a good roundabout way to say it, but just get just get moving. You know, that's what you need to do. Just get, like you said, get more limber, get active. Great time of the year to do it. And uh, it's not only going to help your deer hunting, it's going to help out everything, you know what I mean? But it's definitely going to help your deer hunting. It's going to make you be able to, like you said, go a little harder when it's time to go hard. So um, I remember what I was going to say. Uh, All right. I did it last weekend. There's something that you do is I went through, and this is the time of year we start getting the damn wedding invitations. <laughs> so I went through and I asked my wife, I said, what? Give me every wedding, birthday, anniversary, whatever we got going on during deer season that's planned right now. And I got one so far. I'm like, yeah, this is solid. But anyways, you know, I've had years where I got like five weddings, yeah. you know, so this is a good time to start marking that shit down and understand that like, okay, October 12th, I'm not hunting that Saturday because I have to be at this wedding. So instead of working, you know, you might take a night off to please the wife to hunt this night or whatever, you know what I mean? Take the kids this night so she could do something. You know, the 12th is burnt. So don't be, we're wheeling yeah. and dealing around the 12th you know I mean? because that's it's a bartering chip. it's yeah, an it's absolute a, bartering chip yeah so you're already like hey i did the wedding on <laughs> on the 12th so i'm good so get that stuff marked out planned out um and then along with that if you do have any vacation time um start thinking about when you want to use that if you are going to take a week or two weeks or you know do long weekends what whatever you're going to do um but those weddings and anniversaries and kids birthday parties when you start having kids and i i hate it when the you they come to the dad comes to your birthday party so you're like damn it i gotta go to his kid's birthday party now <laughs> so then you got like eight dads there so that's eight birthday parties that's eight days you know you're like damn that's eight days like that's a lot so you gotta be like okay this kid's birthday is this day I know around that time, there's going to be a birthday party. Just kind of start mental processing that in your head. Um, so we did that the other night. Um, worked out the, the lounge party. Then she's got a bachelorette party the next night. Oh. So I got the kids on the next night. So I was like, well, that worked out perfect. Luckily, those weren't the same yeah. nights. <laughs> we did, I'd had to get a babysitter, but at least she can come now because I was like, shit, when you're involved in much stuff as we are right now, the dates just keep piling up on us. So get your shit lined out. Something I need to be way better about. And I'm trying because I've messed up a lot on the planning two things on the same date. So don't plan on going on an out of state hunt when your buddy's daughter's getting married or something. And you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that would be devastating. Cause it's going to burn you. So, all right, what's your last one? All right, uh, this is something that we, we talk about quite a bit, and it's something we're getting better at, is thinking about, like, I think now you've got a pretty good picture of, like, how your season went last year, is think about, like, all of the wasted hunts in an area that you were kind of iffy on, and now you've got a better picture of it. As season's played out, you've got some more intel of what's going on. And don't be scared to X out that spot. You know, folk maybe focus on a new spot or a spot you didn't get to, um, a spot you wish you would have hunted. I think we've got we've got a spot like that. I wish we would have hunted more. Uh, as the more sign that we found, the more that we were over there. 
And um, I think it's going to be tough to X out a spot that we've had bucks in early season, but they just aren't there when they need to be there. It's going to be tough for me to kind of X that out, but it's something that I need to do and um, focus on a new area because you're not going to kill there October 5th. It's just, yeah. it just ain't going to happen. So mm-hmm. um, we need to get by pickles and get up in there. And that's something that, you know, it, Cody and I, we really want to kill in October. Like, I feel like, we feel like if you kill in the first two weeks, like you are really, really beat that deer. And it can be done. Cody's done it three times. I've been close to doing it in the first two weeks. I've killed on the 23rd. So, I mean, you can, you can do it. It's just, you got to be able to get over just like me get over that old spot or that spot that you really like and get into a new spot and figure it out you have to stop you have to stop depending on the what is and just go with like the best case scenario like man what if what if west side just comes in you know i know like we got the fire sign over here we know pickles is daylight you know way better chance of him daylighting over here you know you get a you get a picture of a buck he's not daylighting every day but you got two pictures of daylight of him and then you have no pictures of the other buck but you want to kill him more you're like i'm going in on him i'm going in and that's something that we need to stop doing um and then i we're completely changing the whole entire way we hunt this year after last year like uh, the areas that we hunt and the time that we hunt them you know, the lease or the, not the lease, the permission property is going from no October to gangbang October. You know, what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it's completely changing. The public is going from, we're covering this whole thing and really trying to figure it out to where we're shit canning 85% of it and targeting about three areas, you know? So definitely changing the way that we go about things, but we got so much work we need to get done out there. It's not even funny. We got to get on that shit. It's just always time. That's the biggest problem. The kids, we say it all the time, but when people start filming and running a podcast and start having multiple kids, they're in for a rude awakening. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it gets insane. I went turkey hunting and made my kids soccer game by three minutes the other day. You know? <laughs> so it's just, you got to play right on the edge of, of uh making it happen you got to take every second you got (laughs) (laughs) exactly exactly well hopefully you guys picked up something that you can use in this episode a lot of this stuff like you said we got to do still um but we're thinking about it now we're gonna start plugging away at it and uh start knocking these out it's a big list now but if you start doing once a month you know one a month couple a month by the time season gets here, you're going to have two things to do. So something to start thinking about now instead of September, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, shit, I got to do this, 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 this. And then you're out on your property when you should be letting it chill, just banging it all up, you know? So. All right. I think this is episode 179. In uh, September 20th, when we release an episode, it's going to be like, all right, we still got to do this. this yeah, yeah. This. September 20th, we'll be like, yeah, we got two things done on Somebody's going to uh, reference this episode right here and be like, you guys said to do yeah. this now. Yeah. This is what you should do. This is what we're going to try to do, but this is probably not what's going to happen. But if you've got the time, this is what you should be doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. If you're solid, this is what you should be doing. We yeah, yeah, learn. yeah a little shaky sometimes so well we haven't said in a while but uh the listeners that are listening now we love you guys you guys are so rock solid the numbers are still there even during the off season when absolutely no one's thinking about deer hunting um we just we appreciate you guys so much tuning in every day listen to us um if you have noticed we kind of cut back on the social media we took a break from all that um i well, i seen a thing today after we talked that was super cool this guy posted a video and he was starting a brush fire and um he was saying like someone commented like i don't know how you're not famous yet or how you're not viral yet 
and he had this brush pile and he's like, I picked up all this stuff from my yard. And he's like, you know, this is like, uh, like me just bit, making content, making content, making content. And he's like, I could throw a lighter fluid on this and just burn it all up and be done in about three minutes. He's like, or I could put a candle under this and it'd probably take about 20 minutes for this thing to start. So he showed, he put a candle under it and it, the flame just got really small and got bigger and bigger and bigger. And he's like, I don't plan on getting viral and writing it out. He said, I just plan on being here and being consistent. And I feel like that's kind of where we're at. You know, we're just planning on being here for you guys and just being consistent. We don't need to be a big giant thing overnight. We're not trying to be the biggest podcast out there. We're just here being consistent, learning and growing as dads and men with you guys, you know? So that's something that kind of hit me today that we're kind of doing. We're just, we're just taking it as it goes. And that's what this guy was doing. The guy was like probably in his fifties, had a big, long gray beard. <laughs> I don't know. I followed him. I don't know what he posts regularly, but uh, I'm kind of excited to see more of his content, but that was just kind of cool. That's, that's what we're doing. We're just here being a constant flame for people to just get a little tidbit knowledge for whitetails or being a dad or anything they can pick up from the show. So um, if you see us posting less on social, that's kind of why we're just kind of letting it do its thing. We're, we're going to pick it up a little bit here, but uh, man, it, it gets tiresome, you know, trying to post every day like we were for a while. And we just took a little break, get our mind right and get ready to go back in. But, one thing we will be, we we will be here and we'll be, you know, putting content out every Wednesday. And uh, like I said, if we're, if we're something big in 15 years, cool. If not, cool. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. So we hope you guys enjoy it. Huge, huge shout out to you guys tuning in every week. Uh, and the messages that we get, we get them. Yeah, we got a couple crazy. this week, super solid, you know just thanking us for releasing content still in the off seats and this stuff. So huge shout out to you guys. You got anything else to say, homie? Just appreciate it. It's like Cody said, a couple messages this week were unreal and uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in, especially during this off season here. So, yeah. All right, guys, well, you know, what we always say, try to do the right thing um, and leave a legacy. And why till legacy is out till next Wednesday when we're coming in your mother ear holes. <laughs> all right you youtube guys we appreciate you tuning in here um excited to bring you some awesome content uh this season we got a lot of really cool guests lined up um definitely going to be fun to be able to talk to some of these people that we wanted to talk to for a long time in the industry and get to pick their brains so gonna be fun we appreciate you tuning in here and supporting us on the last breast side um, if you guys do like this video, leave a comment of uh, something that you might want to hear, might want to listen, might want to see a guest that you might want on the show. So, all right, guys, we're out.